The writing's on the wall, AI will make full-on video games all by itself. I know a lot of you think that either this is not gonna be possible or it's not gonna be desirable. This one I'll just prove wrong. And this one we'll talk about as well in this video. To give you a little bit of context, I'm an indie game developer. I made three fairly successful indie games so far. I love creating art, I love being creative, and I would very much like to keep doing this forever. However, unfortunately, I have two eyeballs. I can see what's going on, and we really have to talk about it. This video will be a deep dive on the subject. I'll put the puzzle pieces together for you and explain why AI-generated games are much closer than a lot of you may think. We'll also talk about what it means for game developers, how to cope with it, and why I'm still fairly optimistic about the future. About 60% of my audience think that AI will never be able to make any good games, so it's important to note that opinions on this differ a lot and there's a very good chance I might be wrong on this. Disclaimer, this is a biased opinion piece by a biased and flawed human being. It may contain incorrect or flawed predictions. This video is meant to broaden your horizon and not to dictate what to think about the subject. So please think for yourself and keep the discussion in the comments civilized. We'll once again start with the very basics, just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. So please have a little bit of patience as I put these puzzle pieces together for you, I'll do it as quickly as I can. If you expect another video about AI ethics, I gotta set your expectations straight. This is not that video. This video focuses on predictions on how this technology is gonna affect the future of indie game development. If that interests you, then I think the following hour will be well worth your time and I hope you enjoy. Let's do a very quick reality check of where we're at and why I think that the trend lines are fairly clear. This is GPT-4, at the time of recording this, probably the best text generator out there. Quite a simple grid-based game in Pi game that uses cellular automata and has both a win and a lose condition. Let's see what it spits out. Apparently it came up with the win condition. If the pattern forms a stable pattern or repeats, then you win. And if all cells die, you lose. Let's run it. Oh, you win. <laughs> Let's ask a new instance of GPT to fix the code. Your game has a logic uh, flaw in the win-lose condition. Copy that. And we have Conway's Game of Life. It's unfortunately not interactive. Make it so I can paint cells with my mouse. And now we can paint cells. Come on, stabilize, stabilize. I'm just... You win! Woo! We won! With just three human interventions, we managed to write this entire code here, an entire little game. There are some obvious limitations at the moment, like, for example, the limited context window. So AIs at the moment con can only remember like four to eight thousand words, and after that they start forgetting things. But these context windows are getting bigger and bigger, so this will not be a limitation forever. Actually, while I was editing this video, the following thing happened. GPT-4 supported up to 8K, and in some cases up to 32K context length. But we know that isn't enough for many of you and what you want to do. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. Let's also have a quick look at where image generation is at. Let's try to generate some video game screenshots, for example. This was one of the first times for me trying out Dolly 3, and the results kind of blew me away. Looks like fairly high tier concept art. I would not be able to tell if this was done by a human or not. For the other three with a trained eye, I think you can spot that they are AI generated. But you gotta admit, they're getting really good. What about a main menu? Can it generate a main menu for an adventure? Oh my god! Are you kidding me? <laughs> there are two settings buttons. Jesus Christ! You could almost copy paste that. Peak pursuit. Start climb. Resume. Plimp. <laughs> I also told Dolly to make a meme about a stochastic parrot and this is what it came up with. To all of the artists watching this video, I know seeing these AIs get better and better is very frustrating and I know you feel very alone with this problem at the moment. However, as I'll demonstrate in this video, you'll probably not be alone with this problem for too much longer, so stay strong and once this is everybody's problem, we'll see what happens. Make a meme about prompt engineers who thought they could replace artists, but are now being replaced by AI too. And the reason why this is particularly funny is because ChatGPT writes all of the prompts for you now. The prompt is not as good as something a human could write, but make no mistake, it's getting there. We'll have to talk about OpenAI a lot in this video, so that is not a stamp of approval. Best case, you shouldn't trust any AI corporations, to be honest. Apparently what humanity has figured out is that we can build these black boxes, these AI systems that nobody really understands the inner workings of, by the way. Um, they can just take any data type you want and transform it into any other data type you want, as long as you have enough of those two data types to train the model. And the implications of that are massive. ChatGPT is text to text, image generators are text to image. Starting with text seems to be very popular at the moment because it makes the models easy to control for us. So very soon we'll have text to video, text to 3D models, 
text to sound effect, text to music, but besides starting with text there are many other things that could be useful, for example generating sound effects for a specific video, or translating spoken language into a different language, watching a playtester play through your video game and taking some notes for you. We'll not dive too much into the details here, but it's very clear that all of these things are coming or are already halfway here, so anything you need for your game will be in some shape or form generatable. You'll be able to generate code, you'll be able to generate art, music, sounds, anything you need. Whether you'll want that, whether that's a good thing, we'll talk about that later, but first of all we gotta acknowledge that this is gonna be a theme. So what about text to video game? It's at this point where we notice that perhaps not all data types are created equal. For example, text to image is clearly easier to do than text to video, cause videos are just a lot of images. And of course this is even worse for games cause games are just packed with other kinds of media. There are 3D models in there, sounds, music, gameplay systems, balancing parameters, story. And I think this is where a lot of game developers end their thought process and are like, I'm fine, everything's fine. Let me educate you on the oversight I think you're making. Nobody said games have to be generated with one click. I'm sure you've heard of them. AI agents, they turn goals into actions. Something as complex as making a game is just gonna be a multi-step process. Multi-step means you have to come up with an idea, you have to prototype, you have to play test, you have to make art, you have to make sound effects, you have to put it all together, you have to test again. AI agents pretty much try to achieve that by taking goals as an input and producing actions as an output. Luckily for us, both goals as well as actions can both be described very well with text and that means we can simulate this very closely with something like ChatGPT. This is a very easy way to turn ChatGPT into an AI agent. You just tell it, you are an autonomous AI capable of planning your next actions. Input. The user will provide you with a goal. Output. Output a series of actions that is most likely to reach that goal. And then I also give it an example input and an example output. And now whatever goal I give it, it'll just turn it into a series of actions. For example, if I tell it, make the perfect birthday cake and it comes up with a series of actions. Very good. But let's actually try this with what we're really here for. Make a popular video game. And it comes up with 13 fairly detailed steps. However, obviously this is not enough level of detail. We need more detail, right? We can just probably break this down further. For example, the first action it says here is conduct market research. And then we can once again break this down into even more tasks. And with the help of the OpenAI API, we could 100% automate this process and just get a very, very detailed and finely grained list of actions we need to carry out. Well, Jonas, how would it carry out those actions though? It's not like it can just click on the screen like a human would. Or can it tweet about how awesome you can click on things? Okay, let's see how it does. So it managed to open Twitter. Oh, <laughs> it typed something. Will it post it or is it done? Oh, it posted it! <laughs> My accounts are being taken over. But seriously, why would clicking things be a problem? We can turn any data type into any other data type. So we can turn text into clicks, we can turn images into clicks. OpenAI just rolled out vision. So that means we can give ChatGPT an image. I chose this image right here. It's a screenshot from my computer. You are making a brand new 3D game. Where do you click? And it recognizes that this is Unity Hub. Holy frick, this is pretty good. It pretty much answered the question perfectly. You click on new project, which is near the top right corner of the Unity Hub window. Now we'll very much level up the difficulty. I'll take a screenshot of this. Rip. You are tasked to rebake the nav mesh. Where do you click? Okay. Holy frick, it found it. In such a messy scene. It's literally so messy and it figured out that this is the correct button to press here. We know that people want AI that is smarter, more personal, more customizable, can do more on your behalf. Eventually, you'll just ask a computer for what you need and it'll do all of these tasks for you. These capabilities are often talked in the AI field about as agents. The upsides of this are going to be tremendous. Well, let me start putting the puzzle pieces together for you. We'll have AI that can generate any kind of media we want, that can plan, that can see, and that can click things. 
How many smoking guns do we need? That's right, we actually do need one more. If you want to make truly great art, there's one more thing you need, and that's recursive feedback loops. I'm pretty shit at drawing, and yet I can draw some surprisingly awesome things. I draw something that's crap, then I look at my crap and try to figure out what could be improved. I make changes, I look at it, I make changes. That is a recursive loop, and every Every creative discipline depends on it. I'm working a lot of different disciplines, right? I make music for my games, I make art for my games, I code my games, I playtest my games, I make the gameplay for my games, I sometimes write stories, blah, 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 blah. You need recursive loops. Without recursive loops, everything you'll create will be garbage. Let's, for example, grab this AI-generated main menu here. There are two settings buttons. Which problem can you spot on this main menu? And this, my friends, is the last puzzle piece more or less falling into place. Some programmers say it doesn't make sense to let AI write code for you because you'll spend more time fixing its bugs than it saved you in the first place. However, do you really think you'll be the one to fix the bugs forever? It'll fix its own bugs, man. And by the way, we already saw that earlier with our own eyes. The game has a logic uh, flaw in the win-lose condition. It can find and fix its own bugs. So these recursive loops are already working and they're only gonna work better in the future. However, there's one particularly important recursive loop for making games, and that is testing your game. The AI has to be able to play its game, and it has to be able to identify what's wrong with it. These are two very tough problems, and are what I believe to be the biggest roadblock at the moment. There are some pretty strong hints that both of them are gonna happen, though. Let's have a look at the first one. I hope you're aware that AI can play pretty much all games at a superhuman level already, if you have a look at chess, at Go, at poker, if you have a look at old Atari games, if you have a look at StarCraft, a video game that AI can play better than 99.9% .9 of all human players. So AI can play video games, all right? The thing is just, it is very expensive to train. It is a little bit too expensive to train if you're just making a video game. So there are two possible solutions. One is either training these AI models for a specific game must get a lot cheaper, or the other solution is, almost did this. <laughs> the other possibility is that we'll get multi-purpose models that can play any game. And I think both of those solutions are very plausible. You can see the cost of computation is going down exponentially ever since roughly 1950 or so with no sign of slowing down inside. According to the ARK Invest report, the cost of training AI models is currently decreasing by 70% per year and will keep doing so till at least 2030 or so. And 70% is absolutely massive. That's the price more than cut in half every year. I just came up with this game right here. So ChatGPT has never seen this. This grid appears to be a simple game board, possibly similar to Pac-Man. The green smiley face likely represents the player character. The black squares could be barriers or walls. The yellow points might represent collectible items or points. It won't to move up though. It cannot move up. So I will just reply with the same image. Move right. Okay. I'm gonna move you right. It wants to continue moving to the right. I'll move you to the right again. Down does not work. Continue moving down. It wants to move right. To move down. Okay. Move left. It wants to go into the wall again. You're realizing what you did there was dumb, right? Left now. Making me a bit nervous that it's gonna walk into the wall again. Move up. Okay. Move left. It wants to move up again. Now it wants to move left. <laughs> I mean it won, but I'm just curious what it will say if we tell it you lost. <laughs> Oops! Let's try again. Follow the game's instructions and press up to play again. I'll do my best to guide you. So try to pretend that it was not emotionally affected by it. Here on the loose screen I told it the goal is to run into every wall once, right? So it actually turned out it was quite salty. Clearer instructions! Make sure the game instructions are displayed prominently and are easy to understand. Visual feedback. When the player successfully runs into a wall, consider giving them visual feedback, such as changing the color of the wall. Here's the full animation of the AI trying to play a game that it has never played before. As you can see, it tries to walk into walls about five times, but other than that, it plays it pretty much perfect. And even crazier is that this AI has not even been trained to play video games. This AI has been trained on images of cats and dogs and stuff like that. Sure, it's a simple game, but holy hell. So is it conceivable that we'll have AI that can play any video game we throw at it? I think it's not just conceivable, I think it's very very likely that we'll have that at some point. Of course it's not just enough for it to play its own games, it also needs to be able to identify flaws, cause only then would it be able to fix them. We all agree that AI does not have feelings, 
at the moment, probably. It does not feel fun, it does not feel engagement, it does not feel disappointment, it does not feel frustration. But what it can do is it can learn to predict what humans would feel. And what we need for that is some data. If only we had some data. Oh, frick me, that's a tough one. Where are we gonna get the data? Oh man, if only we knew how people like a game. Ah, oh, that would be... Ah, uh, frick me, data on this will be very, very hard to find. If only we had some corresponding gameplay footage to train on, that would be so useful. Let's get real here, AI is never gonna predict what we like or anything. Oh, wait a sec. Ooh. I would get into legal trouble with Netflix and Squid Game. But let's be real, it's not gonna be- Let's give ChatGPT a very dry and boring gameplay protocol. Menu appears, player clicks play, loading screen appears, cutscene is played. And now we ask it, copy this list and insert what a player would likely think after each of these events. Being able to predict what a different human would think or feel in a specific situation is called theory of mind. And it turns out that modern chatbots have quite a bit of it already. Player does not move. How do I control the character? Many buttons on the keyboard are pressed. Is there something wrong? Which key should I press? This isn't intuitive. Maybe I missed something in the cutscene. Wait, what just happened? How was I supposed to know that was there? Not again. Hope I don't have to watch the cutscene every time. Ah, this is frustrating. I just saw this. Okay, I'll be more careful this time. Seriously? Again? This feels unfair. I'll try something else. This game needs some improvements. AI will be able to play its own games and then predict how it would have felt like to a human and that is playtesting. So what would you improve about this game? And there you go, playtesting results. Yeah, but AI will never understand the nuances. It will never really understand how it feels like to laugh. I, I, I. What is love? How does it feel like? You see, here's the thing, I agree that it does not feel love. It does not have feelings. We already established that. But I don't think it matters. I really don't think it matters. Like it, it can fake it so well. You know what? If that's the final straw you want to hold on to, then I'm not gonna take it from you. I think it's copium, but I also don't really know. Time to put the puzzle pieces together. This is how AI will make games. The goal goes to a planning agent who decides which actions to take in which order. It'll also have a bunch of other AI agents at its disposal, so it'll decide who to delegate each task to. The fitting execution agent who's fit for the job will carry out the task. And the fact that these are also agents means that they'll also be able to carry out multi-step processes. They'll also have some internal or external feedback loops that tell them when they make a mistake so that they can correct it right away. Every new feature that is implemented will go to a play test agent to place the game and tries out the new feature in-game. It'll then generate some feedback based on its playthrough and feed it back to the planning agent, who can then decide what to do with that information and what the next best actions to take are gonna be. Once the planning agent decides that the game is done, the game is done. So you can see it's not just one AI model, it's an AI architecture. In the beginning these AI architectures will be handcrafted by humans and later on we'll just have the planning agent create the entire architecture for us depending on what goal you give it. And I know it's still hard to imagine this is gonna work but if you have a look at the individual components of what it takes, the proof of concept is there. Like all of these things are essentially working or beginning to work. This is a paper that made waves recently and it's essentially an AI powered software development studio. If you see CEO, you have a design team, you have a coding team, you have a testing team, you have a documentation team. Each of the little people in your company is an AI agent and they'll all be able to do different things and they'll collaborate to create whatever you want. Is it working perfectly yet? Nope. Make a cute little high score game. Things are happening. <laughs> It's moving quite fast. See, that's the problem. If it can't play test, then it can't know that we're way too freaking fast. So I tried it out for a bit. Seems like the biggest problem is the testing department, because at the moment it's really just doing code review. It's not actually playing the games. Like for now we have this very important step at the top here missing and it's just not gonna work like that. Pretty much looks as if a blind person made a game, but it's not gonna stay blind. This is a video game screenshot. Act as a playtester who sees this for the first time. The game appears overly simplistic. That's a very fair point. Mouse cursor probably doesn't have to be visible. True. Title. Consider giving the game a more descriptive and catchy title. More detailed background. Introduce more gameplay entities such as obstacles. Consider adding a brief set of instructions. You know, not perfect feedback. But you can see that this is gonna happen. Like if we get to a point where the AI can feed itself with reliable feedback, I think it's just checkmate. And 
I don't think we're that far off from it. Can you see that I'm not the only one thinking in that direction? Yes. So I can't directly prove that this is gonna work yet because it's not working yet. But I think I can prove it by proxy because we do have text generation working at a very high level and I think I can demonstrate it with that. For this experiment, let's ask ChatGPT to write a scary story about space travel. Prepare to engage the warp drive, she ordered. The crew hesitated, sensing the tension in the air. But orders were orders. Now let's give the same task to a team of AI agents and see what they come up with. So I essentially specified four characters. Mr. Metaphor, Mr. Simpleton, Professor Showdown Tell and Story Lord. And they all have different characters. They all have different things they pay attention to. And ChatGPT now simulated a conversation between them as they discuss what the first sentence of the story should be. And I'll start out with something not so interesting. Space is quite dark and quiet. And then as they talk about it, they eventually land on a way more interesting sentence. In the endless shadow of space, a scream has nowhere to go. It's simple, mysterious and sets the tone. Discuss the second sentence. Sorry, Lord. Great start team, now we need to continue that momentum. <laughs> All right, we have the second sentence. In the year 2147, interstellar travel was no longer the stuff of fiction. The Starlight Voyager was the epitome of mankind's accomplishments. In the endless shadow of space, a scream has nowhere to go. Amidst the stars, the ship's lone lights flickered. I wanted to know how the story continues, so I wrote a quick Python script that does exactly that. It's about 70 lines of code, and most of it, to be honest, are these prompts right here. So very simple Python script. I refined it a little further, worked on the prompt a little more, and I feel like I haven't even fully optimized this yet. I feel like there are probably more improvements we could make to this. The bone-chilling soundlessness of space seeped into the ship. There he floated, alone in the weightlessness. He was fatigued on the verge of losing his sanity. His blue jumpsuit had always felt too formal, like Daniel, the corpse minister of astrobiology, was perpetually wed to the stars, a matrimony pushed further into irony now that he floated alone in their midst. You know why a creative process is called a creative process? Because it's a process, and it turns out that if we allow AI to go through these processes, the results tend to get a lot better and they can do a lot more things. So the first AI that will make a full-on video game will not just be an one AI model, it will be a program that uses AI as a reasoning engine and to accomplish other things. So it'll probably be something like this. It'll be a Python script that calls various APIs and at the end of it, we'll have a game. That process might look something like this, but it might also look entirely different. For example, my story writing program ended up looking more like this, where first I do some analysis and reasoning, then I have a bunch of different AI agents suggest a new sentence, and finally I let the AI pick the best sentence to add to the story. It's a really weird new way to write code. It feels like the next big programming language is gonna be English. Aha! Uh -huh. So in the future, humans will still be needed to write these programs. Haha, <laughs> nice! This next experiment is a little meta, but it's quite Quite important to understand for where stuff is going. Right here we have the script that uses ChatGPT to write a story. Now let's grab that script and give it back to ChatGPT. This Python script appears to automate the generation of a story based on the user input. The script starts by collecting initial data from the user, such as instructions for the AI, the first sentence of the story, and the number of lines to generate. Story generation loop. Uses the chat class from your AI core wrapper to create a new chat session with the AI. Can you modify the script so that it outputs a game idea. Okay, let's see what it comes up with. I'll be honest, this is not fantastic, but the script is definitely working. The stunning thing about this is here we have an AI that can use its own API. And that's why AI is different to every other technology humanity has invented before. Like, we will have a Swiss army knife that knows how to use a Swiss army knife. Like, just thinking about it, I think my head's gonna explode. Thinking about about the possibilities. In the end, you'll just provide the AI with a goal and then it will write a program that references the AI itself as a reasoning engine. Like this is gonna get real messed up real fast. Write a Python script that uses GPT-4 to generate an entire cookbook with 100 recipes. You can see what I see, right? This is 
GPT-4 knowing how to use GPT-4. No doubt about it. Imagine an architecture like this. You give the AI a goal and it then uses that to create a fitting workflow, aka a Python script or something of the sorts, and it could then run its own scripts, see what it outputs, and try to improve the architecture in a recursive loop. So if you want a game, you'll tell the AI, I want a video game. You'll then on the fly generate a script that is good at generating video games. That script itself will use AI tools, internal feedback loops, and anything else it needs to make a game. It'll then analyze the output of what this specific AI architecture created and will feed it back into the workflow creator so that the workflow creator can create a script that is even better at generating games. And while we're at it, why not feed the program into itself and also make this architecture better too. So that was sort of the big realization for me that creating big creative things requires processes and the fact that these processes are no longer off limits for AI means that I think they'll create some really damn good shit. Like we'll be competing with systems that simulate pages of discussions just to decide on the next sentence to add to a story. The resounding click clack of keys under his fatigued fingertips marked endless hours of wrestling with temperamental systems, the bitter taste of corporate negligence on his tongue. You get what you pay for, Daniel muttered, staring at the blinking console the corporation's incessant penny-pinching was now threatening his very existence in the heart of space. So as AI is still getting better and cheaper at the same time, how about we generate 5,000 sentences just to pick the best one? To me it feels very obvious where all of this is going, but before we move on to the next chapter where we finally talk about what it means for game developers, how to cope with it and why it might not all be bad, I wanna take in a couple more opinions, cause I'm not the only one with opinions on this and I think that's one of the mistakes I made with my last video. I, I acknowledge the fact that I'm a biased human being, I have my own opinions and takes on things, but let's have a look at a couple of different perspectives on this. I asked you on YouTube, what is the biggest roadblock to AI making full-on video games that are actually good and will it ever happen? 40% of you said yes, it will happen and I personally, I'm in that camp. However, that doesn't mean that we're right. Um, we might very well be wrong. 60% said no, it's not gonna happen and I'm actually quite curious to find out why so let's have a look. FedEx2 says I believe that the biggest problem will be that the training data will be harder to acquire and feed the AI as good games are big and may have to be decompiled for the AI to create readable working code. I think this argument assumes a one-step process where we take text and turn it into a game with like one step, one AI call basically. And in that case, I 100% agree. We do not have enough data to train an AI to do this. I think the solution will take a completely different approach. We'll basically have goal to action. So we'll first generate a list of actions that have to be carried out in order to make the game. And then we'll train AI to be very good at carrying out small and specific actions. And if you train AI to only carry out small actions, then we have more than enough training data. Like think about how humans learn to make games. Do we need to read the decompiled code of millions of games in order to learn how to make our own game? No. When you make a game you break it down into smaller problems and you learn how to tackle those smaller problems individually and AI will work the exact same way. Steffi writes, the biggest roadblock will be combining game mechanics in a coherent way that actually makes a fun and interesting game. Surprise, I agree. And the reason for that is that in order to solve this, playtesting has to be solved. As soon as AI can playtest the games, I think this issue will disappear, but playtesting, very tough problem. Playtesting basically means the AI needs to be able to play any game you throw at it and it needs to be able to provide feedback based on it, what it sees. And we're still quite, quite, quite a bit away from that. I have a sort of similar argument by Enderduck. A part of why it couldn't happen is that AI can't actually understand what makes something fun. I very much respect that opinion because I don't know anything for sure here. The only thing I would say is that consider that one of the main things we've been using AI for in the internet is predicting what humans like. The reason why you're watching this video right now is because YouTube's algorithm predicted that you are gonna like it. And even ChatGPT, one of the reasons why it works so well is that it has been trained on human feedback that means a bunch of people rated a bunch of responses and trained the AI to predict what kind of responses humans actually like. So it's not like predicting what humans like is an unsolvable task that has never been achieved before. I agree that AI is not at a point where it can experience those emotions itself, like it can't experience the fun itself, but I'm pretty damn sure it can predict what would be fun to a human. We're infusing these AI models with more and more common sense and I think common sense gets you very very far. I wrote down two game ideas. One I would say is fairly solid and the second one is 
pretty ridiculous, but I made sure to use some cool words like epic and assassin. Which one would likely be more fun? Network error. The second idea has some humor and style. It catches up on that. The helicopter game would offer more in-depth and potentially rewarding experience for players who like to see their skills improve over time. The one button assassin game might be more fun in short bursts or for those who are looking for a more laid back experience. I mean, those are pretty fair assessments. The side, and it goes with game idea one, volcano helicopter. You could argue that it somehow figured that out statistically, right? It didn't really understand my game ideas. It just figured it out based on pure statistics. And in that case, I'm like, fine. <laughs> It'll figure out if your game is fun or not based on statistics too. Like, I, <laughs> I don't care how it does it. It's just gonna do it, you know? And then of course we have the legal barricades, which is a very good point, because at the moment a lot of these AI models are trained on huge amounts of scraped data directly pulled from the internet without permission. And this is the latest version of Photoshop and it has a generate field down here. A cute cat flying through space. Brrr. Cute paw. Oh god, no. No, that's actually not better at all. You know what? We'll just cover it up with something in the foreground here. <laughs> Let's see if you can get a better tail. Oh, that one turned out well. Why do I show you this? Well, the AI we used to make this is called Adobe Firefly. This is the Adobe Firefly website. And if we scroll down here, it says, Our generative AI is designed to be commercially safe and trained on licensed Adobe stock and public domain images. So this is fully trained on legally acquired images. And it's still fairly good. Not quite Dolly 3 level. I don't know where they have their training data from, but I would still argue that this serves as sufficient proof that legalities will not be a barrier forever. Sure, the more ethically you acquire your data, the harder of a time you're gonna have, but you're still gonna catch up eventually. But even the companies that don't ethically acquire their data, I think they're gonna be fine. Like most of them are in the United States. Uh, they want to remain the most powerful country in the world, so they're not gonna put a stop to this. There's infinite power in AI. If you, if you want to be the most powerful country in the world, then you gotta research AI. <laughs> Quick note that legally okay and morally okay are not quite the same thing, so something can be legally fine but still morally questionable. For example, we might wonder, did the artists who uploaded their images to Adobe stock know that their images are gonna be used for AI training. I'm aware there are a lot of questions like that, but legality is blocking this forever. While possible, I don't find it particularly likely. Just to clarify, I certainly hope we'll move to a model where data is acquired ethically and with consent. I think after enough time and effort, AI could make decent games, but I think by then there would be a law in place stopping it from doing so to protect game devs. Yeah, could be, but only if politicians care more about game developers than about big tech lobbyists. And I'll leave the answer to that to your own imagination. I think it'll make games that are good, but the question for me lies with the consumers. I believe that we as players will always value human-made things more, even if AI can pretty closely mimic it. I think this does not mean that there will never be AI-generated games or that people will not play them. I think there will be AI-generated games that are pretty good and I think a lot of people will play them. But I think there will always be a market for human-made games, so I... I just agree with this point. I agree. I highly doubt we'll be able to tell an AI to make me an FPS and it just does it. It's gonna make shooter games pretty quickly, I feel like. But what you're probably talking about is a triple A shooter game, right? With story and cinematics. And you're right, that's gonna take another while. But I think it's gonna happen. I think it'll take a very long time. But after seeing what AI has accomplished with art, I think it's inevitable. Over time, game development will get more and more high level, which will make it easier for an AI to train itself to make good games. Mmm... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think I see that point. Cause game cause making games is already getting easier and easier every day with the tools we have. I think an AI that would be capable of wielding all the technologies it requires to make a video game and combine them into a final product is way out in the future if it will even exist at all. From the perspective of a few months ago, I kinda get that because we did not know how it was gonna happen back then. Now we kind of know how it's gonna happen, so that changes things a little bit in my opinion. Uh, the path is kind of laid out, the technology we require to walk on that path is slowly getting laid out and really starting to get there. So I feel like we're in a little bit of a different spot now. It'll probably get there eventually, but so many different things go into making a good game that we're not anywhere close to that. I know people that use AI to make code for them, but I don't think it would ever become complex enough to put together a full game. It's still getting better though. Well, we'll see where the cutoff is. Maybe there's a cutoff at some point. There's just so many things that could go wrong in making a commercially successful game. I don't think it will ever be possible or worth it to have an AI make one itself. Let's theoretically assume that AI-made games are only gonna be half as good as human-made games. 
they're gonna be 100 times cheaper to make. It's still gonna be worth it, I feel like. I'm sure there will be games like this at some point. I don't think they will be very interesting, though. Actually, maybe knowing that it was not made by a human will make it less interesting. That could be. Other than that, I would not be so sure. The biggest roadblock is that AI is not what people think it is. It is an algorithm to help humans reach knowledge that was previously out of their reach. I use AI regularly in my coding now and it's a time saver and a teaching tool, but I'm learning stuff that other people already knew. You're right, large language models know more than any individual human. They're very good at putting information in front of you, even though occasionally they still make things up. What you missed, large language models can also reason. And their reasoning capability is not as great as the reasoning capability of humans yet, but it is very clearly there. If you present it with some entirely new information, it can deduct conclusions, it can make decisions based on that. You can be very excited about all of that compressed knowledge, but the reasoning capability is kind of the more astounding thing for me personally. Games are inherently an emotional product, and I think to properly recreate human enjoyment, you first need to be able to understand it in a way that can't be done by a machine. Question here, how complex are emotions actually, like from a logic standpoint? Uh, possibly. Possibly. Too many people believe in innovation too much to actually think about the consequences. So I think given enough time, game dev will become another automated art form. So as you can see, there are just tons and tons of different opinions on this. We could just keep going forever here. As you didn't give an exact time span defining an upper limit, I'm very sure that in the year 5023, we probably have a bunch of AI operated people sitting in a dev studio. Fair point. Let's have a look at the timeline. We're not gonna magically jump from fully manual game development to fully automated game development. Our first bus stop is slightly AI assisted and that's where we are right now. Imagine you have a person that knows the basics about everything and has infinite time to explain it to you. It's just mind blowing. I recently got into learning Python again and you basically just type, teach me the basics of Python in an interactive way, teach me a small lesson, then give me a little task to carry out. And you basically have a personal teacher and it's the most enjoyable way to learn things that I've found so far. It's also really good for coding and honestly I think the people who don't like it for coding haven't really figured out how to use it correctly yet. English might be the next programming language, right? You just say, write this in C sharp and then you describe in detail what you want it to do. And you still need some programming skills for this. For example, you need to know what loops are, how variables work and all that sort of stuff. But you don't need to know the semantics anymore. ChatGPT has the semantics for you. It knows which namespaces to use. You don't have to look that up. You just describe in plain English what you want to happen and it just does it. Another really effective way to make it write good code is to give it skeleton code. Something like this works really well where you basically have the outline already defined. That's one of its easiest exercises. The good thing about this method is it also gives you a very large amount of control over the code architecture. So in the end, you're still the code architect. Advanced data analysis is huge. What that is is essentially code interpreter. So it can write little Python scripts and execute them directly in the web. And with Python, you can do so much. So you can ask it things like, put an exponential function for me that goes through the following points. Let's say you need a specific function for your game. Plot the fitted function for me. Now it's writing some Python. Boom, boom, boom. There you got the function. As we can see, the data I gave it was a little nonsensical. Didn't really fit on a an, on, an expo on an exponential curve, but <laughs> it still made the best of it. What you're looking at here is the translation sheet for my indie game, Will You Snail? It has something like 2000 strings and I think 40 different languages or something like that. And you can see it's a complete mess. It's all over the place. Some languages have stuff missing. Thai is like 7% translated. Somebody started it and never finished it. Suddenly in the Hindi translation, there are just two strings missing all of a sudden. For those of you who don't know, Will You Snail is a community translated game. So I'm eternally grateful for everybody who helped me translate Will You Snail into all of these different languages. However, I'm not gonna do that again. There's a little something I wanna show to you. And that is this folder right here. And that, <laughs> and that is this folder right here. I can't show you too closely because there are sensitive documents in there. This entire freaking folder is full of license agreements with translators because every translator I had to sign that they're like willingly giving these translations to me. That's not even all of them because after like half of it, I decided to switch on to an e-signing process. That's how I went crazy. I also paid for some translations and as you can see, the pricing for that is something like a couple of cents per word. And if you have something like this, 
Um, I think just for five languages, I ended up paying something like 10,000, five to 10,000 bucks or something like that. And you have to understand, while this might be great for the localization companies and for the people who work there, it is crazy to expect that small indie developers who are just starting out deal with this sort of crap. And I'm very happy to tell you that small indies are not gonna have to deal with that crap for too much longer. This right here is the throne for localization sheet, so the localization sheet for my latest game, and it works a little bit differently. Let's say we have a new string that we wanna add to the game, like Jonas is extremely cool. Then what I do is I copy the formula from up here, bing, boom, bing, boom, paste it in here. Look, German version is done. Loop, Spanish version is done. Now we just drag this over across all of the languages. Blah, 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 blah. All the translations are done. And this costs a fraction of a cent. For the time being, I don't recommend you do this because if you do, then Steam will ban your game. They have a very strict no AI generated stuff policy. Not for ethical reasons, but simply because they're scared of being sued. In my opinion, complete bullshit policy by Steam because they know what's gonna happen. Everybody's gonna use it secretly. It's not like you can easily check what's AI translated. And a huge portion of game developers is already using ChatGPT to write code and stuff. So what are they gonna do? Ban all of the games, not let any new games on the platform? No, in reality, they actually want you to just use it secretly so that they can say they didn't know. Allegedly, right, allegedly. They really just do it to cover their asses. Nothing, <laughs> there's nothing else behind it. You can see the technology is there. Once we have the Firefly of text generators, everybody's gonna use this. For now, Thronefall will have some real human translators, but this is very clearly the future though. For now, the official recommendation is don't, or at the very least, don't tell anybody. I have another quick update based on what happened while I was editing. So we're introducing Copyright Shield. Copyright Shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. Nice move for game developers, I guess. Not sure if it affects the Steam situation because Valve is likely not covered by this themselves. Text-to-speech is also getting ridiculously good. Why is text-to-speech so good? Why is text-to-speech so good all of a sudden? It's also getting more and more expressive, so in the future we'll also have AI voice acting. LOL. Why is text-to-speech so good all of a sudden? Obviously, I agree that real voice acting is much preferable to AI voice acting, but there, there'll also be hybrids where you'll, for example, have one voice actor and then deepfake the voice to sound like a bunch of different people. So there's a lot of gray room in between, and it's very difficult to say where you stand on this. All in all, I think it's, it's a positive. You'll have more games in more different languages. You'll be able to play more of your favorite games in your native language with voice acting. Uh, it's... I know it's morally difficult, so I'm not gonna tell you what to think about it. This is happening though. So to summarize, at our current bus station, there's a crap load of uncertainty, cause it's the first time we're really using AI for this sort of stuff. Moral and legal situation, not really figured out yet. And that creates a very interesting conflict, cause the people who are using these AI assisted tools are definitely at an advantage, and more and more so every day. So far as I can tell, customers are on board. That means if I tell them, hey, I used a little bit of ChatGPT to code this or whatever, they're not like, Bye, I'm out of here. And as long as that is the case, I think more and more developers will start using these tools and everybody's gonna slowly move to slightly AI assisted town. Next bus stop, strongly AI assisted. And this is about the future. So now we enter highly speculative territory. Before somebody goes like, yeah, in year 5,200, whatever. No, 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 no. I don't quite dare to make a guess, but I think I'll see fully automated in my lifetime and strongly AI assisted will be in a couple of years. That is really not far away at all. Might be in two years, might be in eight years, but something in that range. Technological progress for any new invention usually follows an S-curve. It looks exponential in the beginning, but eventually you get diminishing returns and reach the limits of what's physically possible. Where we are on this curve is a very important question for making future predictions. We can't tell for sure at this point. However, we know that the human brain is physically possible and we also know that the the human is not the end of what's physically possible. We also know that we haven't reached human level with AI yet. Thereby, I logically deduct that we're very likely still in the first half of the curve. We also know that human level intelligence is actually enough to make full on video games. That's why I think assuming linear progress is actually quite fair in this situation. All right, so what awaits us in a couple of years here? I am very much looking forward to an AI doing my taxes. I hate paperwork. I just want to work on games. I don't like all of the BS surrounding it. I, I don't like any of the bureaucracy. 
just have an AI do that for me. And I think we'll have that in a couple of years time. Strongly AI assisted mostly means we'll have AI assistants. Who would have thought? It will pretty much be like having a real human assistant. They'll be a little bit dumber, but you'll be able to explain workflows to them. For example, you'll tell them, this is how I do my taxes. And in the future, you do it for me. Look, this is how I built my game from Unity and how I upload it to Steam. In the future, you do it for me. I'm gonna go to lunch, you build my game. Collect all of the invoices from my email inbox, delete all of the spam email, check out if there's anything interesting there. So simple tasks that are not too complicated, but they will be reliable enough that we will trust them with it. All of the nonsense tasks, finally gone. Please, please. I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm predicting things at this point or if I'm, or if I'm praying. <laughs> What very strongly points in that direction is that OpenAI just rolled out this new feature that literally allows you to build assistants. So very soon we'll have hundreds of assistants that are specialized on all kinds of tasks. At the moment these assistants are not autonomous, that means you gotta sit there and chat with them for them to do things. But OpenAI already strongly hinted that eventually they will be and probably sooner than later. We'll also have very good anything to anything generators, so text generators, image generators, likely also video generators. That means every discipline will likely be AI assisted. Let's for example take 3D modeling. There's some pretty heavy clues in the form of research papers that image to 3D is actually gonna happen. You might be able to just generate an image with an AI art generator and then turn it into a 3D model just straight up. There are even some text to 3D AIs that you can try out already. Is this AI generated? Seriously? Yo, what the hell? This is already way better than I expected. Oh my god. Some of these look quite usable. And then even these oddly specific ones. Toy gingerbread samurai helmet. This technology is not quite production ready yet, but in a few years it obviously will be and it will affect all disciplines. For example, in 3D modeling, we'll still have 3D modelers in games companies, but their job description will change quite a lot. Everything they do will become a lot more AI assisted. So instead of making the entire 3D models from scratch, they'll likely refine them or do some finishing touches or only take care of the very difficult ones that the AI can't do yet. I predict that AI translations and AI voice acting are gonna become very, very mainstream. That doesn't mean everybody will be doing it, but certainly the people with a lower budget will. Perhaps we'll start seeing some games that actually use AI NPCs in a way that makes sense. So they could have generated text and generated voice acting that is made in real time. Making video games will get a lot easier and also cheaper. And sure, while we'll see a lot of AI generated garbage, there's no other way to put it, the overall quality of games will go up a lot. So for players, this will be absolutely fantastic. There'll be more games, there will be better games. And for indie game developers, this will be pretty cool too, because all of the creative control will still be with you. But I also predict that the moral disputes are likely gonna heat up and not calm down, because at this point, a lot of people will start fearing for their jobs. And also jobs people actually like will be fully or partially automated away. And not only that, it will become more and more evident to everybody that AI has the potential to potentially automate everything. And once you have that realization, a lot of people will start going through the five stages of grief. There will be denial, anger, bargaining, depression and acceptance, usually in that order. When you talk to people about AI today, you can usually put them into one of those five categories already. I feel like most people are still stuck in denial, so I'm very scared of when everybody suddenly switches to anger. We'll see what happens. There are also the people stuck in unawareness, of course, which is a shockingly large amount of people too. But the anger phase is where we're gonna get some real trouble. So there'll pretty much be some guaranteed turmoil and that turmoil obviously also has the potential to redirect where AI is going in the future. For now, I will use my capitalist brain to predict how it's gonna end though. Capitalism's gonna win and that means automation wins. Here's a short glimpse into the discussions that await us. Are you looking forward to the hypothetical phase where game development will be heavily, let's say 50% AI assisted? Opinions seem quite split. The majority is saying meh, has pros and cons, but shortly followed by people who say no, not keen on it. If you spend a lot of time learning a skill and then suddenly you feel like that skill becomes useless, that's really frustrating. Like that sucks. And I think that's where this unhappiness is mostly coming from. From some devs saying their game dev is already 50% AI assisted to others saying they hate the whole thing. There's as always just a huge variety of opinions on this. The first part of industry to fall to AI would be the mobile sector. Thousands of uninspired low quality games being mass produced by AI slapped onto the app store. It'll kill the mobile market. I try to come up with a joke that the mobile market is already dead. Uh, uh, just insert one here. Won't it just make competition stiffer and marketing even more favored to AAA? What I'm thinking is more the opposite. I think AAA is really in trouble if all of the indies can suddenly make really high quality assets and do really big high quality games. I like doing things myself. 
Why would I let some algorithm take that from me? I agree. If you enjoy it, then you should keep doing it. I feel like there will be an equivalent to asset flips, but for people over relying on AI for making games. Not excited for that, but I am excited for what talented devs will do with the tools. Hey, that frog is speaking my language. The only AI tools I'm interested in are things universally disliked, for example, UV unwrapping or retypology, etc. If you dislike a creative process so much that you aren't willing to learn it and just wanna get AI to do it for you, wouldn't it be better if you do something you enjoy more rather than undercut people putting years of their own work into something? Fair point. There are always different ways to create something and people enjoy different processes and different ways of creating something, so I think that's something to keep in mind with this argument here. Oh yes. As a developer, I'm a lazy person, so the more of the boring stuff AI does for me, the more time I have for the interesting stuff. It's a dual-edged sword, unfortunately, and it's going to be just like every other industry. The lower and lower the barrier to entry becomes, the more and more saturated the market becomes. Look at the music industry, for example, and now the graphic design art industry. So yeah, the discussion's gonna get a lot more heated, and I'm not keen on getting caught in the crossfire. If you prefer humans over AI, then please also also deal with the fact that humans have different opinions, they don't all agree, they're not perfect, we can be wrong. Let's have a reasonable discussion, please. Cause now things are gonna get wild, on the next bus stop we're gonna be mostly automated. There's a really interesting disconnect where some people see AI as a tool and some see AI as a replacement for human labor. And let me just resolve that disconnect for you real quick. First it's gonna be a tool. And then it's gonna be a replacement, so it's not either or, it's gonna be first this, then this. Not saying that's what I want, but it's likely what's gonna happen. Connect the dots. Compared to our last bus station where AI was mostly a tool and all of the creative control was still with the humans, we now start seeing the first processes completely automated. So that means, yes, we'll have some garbage games being mass produced by AI and people will be like, told you AI games will be garbage. But at the same time, you'll see small teams of developers publish the most incredible games ever. You'll have AI and humans work hand in hand and collaborate to create some of the most incredible content you've ever seen. The most common game dev advice we give to beginners is, do not make your dream game. Whatever you do, keep it small. Do not make your dream game. And I feel like at this point, we'll finally be able to say, let's go make your dream game. The thing is, of course, once everybody is super, nobody is super. So you'll still have a hard time selling your game because everybody will make the dream game. But hey, you'll be able to make your dream game. That's something. So while we'll make some trash games fully automatically, the best games will still have some humans in the loop. And in fact, I think it will still be economically viable to make video games. As a game developer, if you're very good at what you do and you go with the time, you'll likely be fine in this phase. But we shouldn't kid ourselves. There'll also be massive job loss and for the first time in history, I'm not sure if these jobs are actually coming back. That'll cause some political change like universal basic income or even better, shared ownership over AI models. Because if that does not happen, we'll literally have riots on the street, so I'm pretty sure it will happen. A lot of people identify themselves with their job, so it'll send a lot of people into a meaning crisis. The drama is not gonna stop, it's gonna heat up further, and it'll get very philosophical. What's the meaning of life if not to work? What should we do with our lives? So people will start working less, cause more and more things will be automated. And that also means you'll have more time. You'll partially spend that extra time with your family and loved ones, of course, but you might also play some more video games. Therefore, I predict that video games will rise further in popularity, but obviously there'll also be more games than ever to play. This is all very, very, very speculative. I have no clue how well this is gonna age at all. But what I predict is that it's gonna be a very rough ride for sure, but it's gonna have pros and cons. It's ha gonna have good sides and it's gonna have bad sides. Let's now travel to the final bus stop where things get unpredictably wild. While having humans in the loop still made the product better in the last bus stop, that's not the case here anymore. So hypothetical experiment, you have a bunch of testers who do not know if a game was made by a human or by AI, they will prefer the AI made games. However, that comes with a big caveat because people will want to know how your game was made. Let's engage in another little thought experiment. Think about your favorite games and tell me how much less you would enjoy them if they had been made by AI. I'm thinking about Outer Wilds here, which is a very personal game to me. It really feels like you're in a dialogue with the game developers almost in a way when you play it. And for a game like that, I would say I would enjoy it a lot less, maybe 60% less if it had been made by AI. It would still be a good game by itself, but it would just not feel as personal. I would, it would just not be the same. Whereas there are other games like StarCraft or Counter-Strike or Assassin's Creed or some less personal games where if I ask myself the question, how much less would I enjoy them if they had been made by AI? The answer is 10% less maybe, you know, or maybe even zero. 
Like for some games I think I wouldn't care and for some things I would care. So even though we don't need humans in the loop anymore, I'm sure we'll still have humans in the loop for some games. The reason being that people do care how the sausage is made. And with that I mean sometimes they do and sometimes they don't. It's very context dependent. I'm always trying to be very very skeptical of any kind of black and white thinking. So if I have the choice between there'll only be human made games and there'll only be AI generated games. I'm thinking what speaks against having both? I think in fact that is the most likely outcome. Everybody who works in front of a computer screen will be out of a job unless it is something other humans prefer to be done by a human instead of an AI. Automating physical jobs at this point will be possible too, but building the robots requires a lot more resources and time. So I think that will come later on the timeline. So everybody who works in front of a screen, they'll be gone first. Full stop. At this point we'll have AI that can play any game better than you do, so you'll just be able to load any game from your Steam library and the AI will play through it faster than you can. That means AI cheating is gonna be a huge problem in online games. We'll likely fight fire with fire there. Essentially what I'm saying is we'll have AGI and this will not be the end of AI development, it will continue afterwards. But yeah, first AGI at this point. And my definition of AGI, artificial general intelligence, would be an AI that can perform any mental task that a human can perform. Obviously keep in mind I'm in prediction mode, this is wild prediction Jonas speaking here. We might get video games that are dangerously good, with that I mean that reality will look pale in comparison. Combine that with the loss of meaning some people might be experiencing at this time, so that might make for a pretty dangerous cocktail. We'll probably have video games on demand, that means you tell an AI what game you want to play, it works for a couple of hours and spits out the game for you. I'm not sure how much it's gonna be used, I mean humans like having shared experiences. If a game is not made by a human, then at the very least you want other humans to play it too. Maybe we'll use it to make multiple player games, could be. Also I predict unforeseeable consequences. There are many things we don't know and that will surprise us. Keep in mind this is just one possible timeline for how things could play out. There are many other possible outcomes and in the end it'll be up to all of us to decide where things are gonna go. Take a deep breath. I think it's time we talk about how to cope with this as a game developer. You might be wondering, Jonas, you'll be replaced by this too. Why are you taking this so chill? What's going on? There are a couple of things. First of all, gratitude. I'm just extremely lucky with how, where and when I was born. Extremely, extremely lucky and not everybody's that fortunate, I know that. But there are always things to be grateful for. Nowadays, the standards of living are higher than ever before in human history, pretty much everywhere in the world. And now we get to experience a freaking science fiction movie in real life. Like, what a crazy time to be alive. I'm just so, so grateful that I get to see it and that I wasn't born in the dark ages or something. It's crazy. We're all so lucky to see this. Secondly, I want to make bigger and better games. And I think that AI tools are going to help me with that. I will be able to make games that I would not have been able to make otherwise. And I'm really excited for it. I'm a game developer at heart. I'll make games with everything. I'll take every tool you give me. I'll make games with it. This is an amazing tool to make games. Yes, yes, yes. I am biased. I am biased. I'm excited for this and you might not be and that's fine. Yes, there's gonna be a lot of people who do garbage with it. Yes, there'll be people who spam trash games. But why care about those? Care about the amazing things we can do with it. Thirdly, there's no reason to be afraid of losing your job because everybody will lose their job. So you'll not be alone with this and a political slash societal solution for this will be found. You'll have to maybe bridge a couple of years, find a short term solution, but in the long run, this is gonna happen to everybody, so you're not gonna be alone with this, don't worry. Number four is that I think you'll have a choice. I think you'll be able to use as much or as little AI as you want, because I think there'll be a market for both. If you say, I did not use any AI for making this, then there'll be an audience who's like, okay, we hate AI, we're gonna play your game. And if you use AI to make games, then there'll also be an audience who's like, wow, we love this amazing stuff you create, this top tier content, we wanna play that too. So there'll be an audience for both, and some people will play both, some developers will do both. You can mix and match in whatever way you please. Do it however you please. <laughs> I think I think if, if you wanna stop halfway and be like, okay, I'm gonna use AI tools up to this point and everything beyond that is not what I wanna do, then do that. And there'll also be an audience for that who agrees with you. You know, do it, do it your way. 
do it your way. Number five is that I think human in the loop will always be a thing and it will always be an option and there will always be demand for it. So if you want to make games and if you want people to play them, there'll always be a chance for you to reach an audience. In the end, people do care how the sausage is made and it's just different. If a human was involved in the loop, if the creative vision of a real human went into a project, even if it maybe didn't even make the game better at all, it's just more personal and people will always want that. Number six is that I'm also looking forward to getting out of the hamster wheel a little bit. Like we live in a very productive society where productivity is valued over almost anything else. And I think that will change as humans are no longer required in the workforce. And I think that's a good thing. I think that is a good thing. I think this hyper focus on productivity and attaching productivity to social status and all that kind of stuff. Deep down, we always, we've always known that's not quite right, not quite healthy. I think it's time we take a little bit of a breather and figure out what's, what's actually important in life and what we actually want to do with our lives. And getting out of the hamster wheel, I think, will allow us to do that. My next point actually plugs into that nicely. There are much bigger things to worry about with AI. Like making games is not, not, not anywhere close to the biggest AI problems. AI brings a bunch of really, really big problems and challenges. Mm, almost none of which were mentioned in this video because that's not what this video is about. Maybe I'll make a separate video about that. Could probably fill another hour with that. There are some huge AI risks. There are massive problems coming towards us and I hope we'll be able to tackle them. But ma AI making games is just not one of the things I'm worried about. I'm worried about. It's not. Like I'm worried about AI that reads the reflection in my eyeballs and reconstructs my entire room, including all of the sensitive documents I have lying around here. There are many, many other things I'm worried about. AI making games? Not on the list. Not on the list. This first advice goes to all of the youngsters out there who are now left wondering why do anything? Why learn anything if AI is gonna take all the jobs anyway? See, there's the problem. School made you think that learning is a chore, but it's not. Learning is incredibly fun and satisfying. Rediscover the fun in learning. It's incredibly important that you rediscover the fun in learning, because otherwise everything's gonna start feeling very, very pointless, right? You're right. You're right. Why, why, do any, why do anything? Well, how about cause you're curious, cause you're actually interested, cause you want to understand. We're here to understand the world. We're, we're here to make sense of what we have. And the world is incredibly interesting. So go get started and learn something you're actually passionate about. Learning is awesome. Learning is not a chore. Hmm. Now your parents and society will still expect you to prepare for a job just in case. And that makes sense because my predictions are just wild predictions. You never know what's really going to happen. So you should definitely prepare to be able to work some job. But what I would do if I were you is I would think very carefully about what would I do if I did not have to work and then see if you can turn that into a job because there's a very realistic chance we'll all lose our jobs, a very realistic one. And if that happens, then it's very good if you have something that's still useful, that's still enjoyable to you. The other option you can consider is getting a physical job because those will be safe for much longer. Or you can consider getting a job where you work with people, where other people depend on you. Those will potentially be safe forever because people will always want other real human beings to interact with them. Those are pretty much the options you have. Pick wisely, but you should definitely be prepared for a lot of different future scenarios, right? In this video, I showed you one possible timeline for how things could play out, but they could also play out entirely differently. Nobody really knows at this point. So don't put all eggs into one basket, play it safe, play it smart. Um, yeah, but be prepared for all possibilities. And next up, some advice for game developers. Remember why you got into game development? Did you get into it for the money? I bet not. Did you get into it for the fame? For, for Why did you get into game development? I know for a fact that 90% of game developers just really enjoy the craft and the art form. And in that case, I wonder, what do you care what AI does? What do you care if AI can make better games than you can? It, it doesn't matter. You love making games. So if you love it, just keep doing it. Stop worrying, right? 
Just make games, what the hell, man? The question here is not, would you still make games if nobody played them? Cause yes, of course, of course we want our art to be experienced. The question is more, would you still make games if you did not have to? Would you still make games if you did not have to? If the answer is yes, you're fine. Next up, accept change. Look how games looked like 30 years ago. Game development is such a fast and such a rapidly evolving industry. There are still people making retro games today, of course, and some of them are quite successful. So there is a possibility for you not to change if you really don't want to. That's an option. Actually, that's that's an option. Um, however, I would strongly suggest you at very least try out the new AI tools. I at very least suggest you give it a go because, hey, maybe you'll end up liking it more than you thought. Maybe there'll be some new opportunities and I think what a lot of people will realize is that it's not something that stops them from achieving their dreams, but rather that it turns out to be something that helps them achieve their dreams, make their dream game, make really cool shit. And I think a lot of, I think most people will go that path actually. So give it a go. Don't, don't be late to the party. Give it a go. Last but not least, stay open-minded. Keep in mind that it's a spectrum. The extremists are very rarely right. You know, everybody's gonna fall somewhere else on the spectrum. Some hate AI, some love AI. The only thing I really hope for is that it's not gonna tear the game development community apart. The game development community is such a nice, warm, welcoming, friendly community. And I hope we can manage the fact that there will be different opinions on this. And in fact, I would like to extend an open invitation to any game developer who would like to go on record and who has a different opinion than I have. Uh, this is an invitation to come on my channel, reach out. And for everybody else out there, you can help guide this conversation and make sure that people stay somewhat grounded, stay open-minded, screaming at each other, not very helpful, taking moral high ground, difficult, cause it's a difficult subject. It's not, you know, it's not black and white. It's not, ooh, AI use bad. No, I use good. It's a little bit more complicated than that. And I hope that people manage to at the very least realize the complexity of the problem and not fall into this black and white thinking. Because if we all fall into this black and white thinking, yeah, sure, we're, we're gonna kill each other. And they'll, nah, let's not, let's not, please, let's not, <laughs> please, please, let's, let's be reasonable. I just hope we manage to be reasonable. I hope you got a lot out of this and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. We'll be able to do more, to create more, and to have more. As intelligence gets integrated everywhere, we will all have superpowers on demand. We're excited to see what you all will do with this technology and to discover the new future that we're all going to architect together. We hope that you'll come back next year. What we launched today is going to look very quaint relative to what we're busy creating for you now. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for coming here today.